everyone! I've decided to do another update on the Iceland volcano. I made my first video about three weeks ago when the eruption first started and a lot has changed since then so I wanted to make a quick little update about the major changes that have been going on since I last told you about the volcano. <laughs> If you haven't seen that first video, I recommend that you go watch that first because that's where I have most of the like basic information about this eruption and how it happened and the earthquakes and stuff beforehand. So check that out and then if you have already watched it, welcome back and let's get started on some updates. And I have myself surrounded with all of these lava rocks on my desk because I have a little bit of FOMO of not being in Iceland right now. And the more I watch videos of people visiting and taking all this, all these amazing pictures and videos, the more jealous I get. So I'm just pretending that I'm there and pretending that I collected these from the volcano. Anyway, first a little safety update. In my last video, I mentioned that this volcano has very little risk to the nearby village and the nearby city and the nearby international airport. Luckily, it's in a really isolated area in a mountainous area with valleys. And that's still pretty much true. New fissures have opened and people were hiking around the area when the first or when the second fissure opened and they closed the main hiking trail at that point. And now I think a pretty big chunk of the the major hiking trail that was there is now covered by the lava flow and people can still access the eruption site but it's not by the same hiking trail obviously because that is now permanently closed. Other than that, the eruption site has been closed a couple times over the last few weeks because of things like bad weather, bad visibility, which affects um, any possible rescue missions if people get lost. And also the gas levels have been fluctuating, so they close it depending on the safety of that and the wind conditions and where the gases can be carried to. So other than that though, it's remained pretty safe and still pretty optimistic on no infrastructure or anything else being ruined by the lava flows. Over the last couple weeks since I've made the last video, I've been enjoying watching all the different drone footage and all the different live streams there are. Last night I was actually watching one of the live streams and it was so mesmerizing. It kind of felt like when you're at a campfire and you're just like staring at the fire and you find yourself zoning out. That's what it feels like and I can't imagine the feeling of what it is when you're actually in person watching it. Especially at night with the glow against the dark backdrop, it must be magical. As of today, April 15th, the site was actually closed because of bad weather today. It was really low visibility and really high winds and precipitation and fog and stuff, so they closed it down and even the webcams, you can't even really see anything. And I just want to say thank you to all the people that have been providing all this beautiful footage, whether it's a webcam or a drone or your other photography or videography. I've really been enjoying it on YouTube and one of my favorite things about watching these videos is the sound. I don't know why I never thought about it or I've never seen a video of what a lava flow sounds like, but I really hope that I get to experience that in person soon and I'm dying to go to Iceland, especially in time before this eruption stops. Okay, on to the fissures. There are now eight total fissures erupting at the eruption site. The first one, obviously, was when the volcano first started erupting on March 19th, which is what I talked about in the last video. The second one opened up on April 5th, about a kilometer away from the first fissure, and it was in this like diagonal northeast trending direction from the first one. And since then, there have been more fissures that have opened up between these two. The third one opened up on April 7th, the fourth one opened up on April 10th, and then the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th ones all opened up on the morning of April 13th, which was only two days ago on Tuesday. This is not very surprising, and it was actually estimated that more fissures would open up, they just weren't sure exactly where or when, and it is likely that more fissures will continue to open up, possibly in the north or the south, more specifically the northeast or the northwest, which I'll show you on a map. They had to close down the major hiking trail, I think it was called Hiking Trail A, because when the second fissure opened up, it was near the hiking trail and then eventually the lava flow did end up covering up the trail but before that happened it was luckily closed so that no one was hurt. Luckily no one was hurt when these fissures opened up because um, scientists kind of know where the danger zones are and they tell people to stay out of those danger zones. After the second one did start to open, the area was completely evacuated just in case any more fissures continued to open up but people have been allowed back there since then. 
The second one was 400 to 500 meters long, and it's also possible that these fissures might merge together and form one big crack, and we'll see what happens in the next couple days or couple weeks. Maybe I'll be back for yet another update <laughs> and see how much has changed since this video. Once the second fissure opened, it was flowing at first into the same valley as the first one, Gelding Gadalier, but after a little while when it filled up that valley a little bit more, the lava river flowed into Meridalir, which is the valley that scientists estimated would be the next destination for the lava flows once the first valley filled up. And the photos and videos of this I am obsessed with because it's so cool watching the lava river flow down that slope and it forms this beautiful delta into the new valley. There are some really amazing resources online to look at if you can't be there in person, especially these 3D maps that I found that were made by the Institute of Natural Science in collaboration with Civil Defense and the National Land Survey of Iceland and the University of Iceland. These maps show what it's like at the eruption site. They show what it was like before the eruption, when the eruption first started, and then a couple dates in between then and now. So the first one all the way at the bottom is on March 7th, 2021. This was obviously before the eruption began. And you can see the valley, obviously, is not filled in with lava yet. And you can kind of see what the topography of the land looks like before any of these um before any of these eruptions started changing the landscape and literally changing the map and then when you go up from there there's one from march 20th the day after the eruption started this is the first full day that the eruption began and this is the valley of gelding Gadalier. and it's so cool these pictures um these maps were created with photos taken from airplanes and turned into these 3D models by some great people at the Institute of Natural Sciences and uh, University of Iceland and all the other people that collaborated. You can also see from March 20th map the gas plumes, some of the gases floating out of the volcano. And up from there, we have one from March 23rd. This one is really pretty because it has a bunch of snow now from a snowstorm that happened. In this one, you can see the spatter cone building up a lot higher compared to when the eruption first began. And you can see the valley starting to fill up. This is pretty much when I made the video. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I made my first video about this eruption around the 23rd to the 25th, 27th maybe? I don't know. And then we have one from April 5th, which is the day that the second fissure opened. And this one is great because you can really visualize what it looks like of the, the topography there. You can see the first fissure, how the valley is pretty much full. And then you go over here and you see the second one starting to form this crack. And then you go over to April 8th and we have um, the valley starting to fill up even more. And then this is where you see the lava river finally going down into Miradalar Valley over there. And it's really cool to see the the elevation and what it looks like um, in a 3D model. And April 12th is the most recent one. You see more fissures starting to open up. You see one, two, three, four. And this was the day before four more fissures opened up in between these. Um, it looks kind of similar to April 8th. Obviously, it's a little bit more full in both valleys. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I love these. I'm really glad that they made these. I'm excited to see if they make any more. I also just wanted to say something interesting about fissures and what it's like when they form. I've never seen one form, personally, so I can't even tell you what it's like. But I was reading an article of a geologist saying they got to watch the second fissure open up, and they said it's not anything like you would expect where the earth just kind of like cracks open. Kind of like how you would picture it based on what you see in movies, the earth kind of just cracks open. But it's a little bit different. It's more like the lava seeps out of the ground and slowly pulls the crust apart. I would love to see that in person. I unfortunately couldn't find a video. Um, if I did find one, I'll include it in here, but I couldn't find one to show you what it looks like. And believe me, I'm really curious too. I wish I could watch what it looked like when one opens. A lot of the other fissures that have opened, opened when they were already kind of in the lava field. 
if you look at the map again, the 3D models, um, some of them opened like under where lava was already flowing. And I saw in videos, it looks a lot like just like a, a bigger bubble coming up out of the already flowing lava. And you can just tell there's more of a volume of lava coming out of this one spot. And that's how people are able to kind of estimate where new fissures are beginning to form. Another thing I wanted to include in this update video is earthquakes. Because in my last one, I said that there could possibly be more earthquakes if new fissures open up. And this did happen. I believe that there were a decent amount of more small earthquakes, a couple more of those little seismic swarms before the new fissures started to open up. And we could see this again, because like I said, the, that earth is being pulled apart as the magma moves up through the crust, causing that displacement and that shaking. So the volume of the lava flow has more or less stayed pretty constant throughout the eruption. It's been almost a month since the eruption began. And when the eruption started, the lava was going at about five cubic meters per second. On April 9th, I think sometime last week for maybe a day or two, the eruption actually kind of doubled in volume and the volume of lava coming out went up to like eight cubic meters per second. But since then, I think it's gone back down to five and it's stayed around that value. And this is pretty consistent between each fissure, even though there are a decent amount of fissures open now because it's the same volcano, it's the same system. So it shouldn't be that different in between each one. As of April 13th, it's been estimated that the amount of lava that has poured out of all fissures combined is about 265 cubic million cubic million, 265 million cubic feet. That is a mouthful. And this is about seven, seven and a half cubic million meters. Seven and a half million cubic meters. Why is that so hard to say? This act, this sounds like a lot, but I actually was watching a video from Reykjavik Grapevine, which has an amazing channel. Um, they said that this isn't really that comparable to even like the surface area of New York City. It wouldn't even cover New York City. So, I mean, New York City is kind of big, but in the grand scheme of things, that's really not that much lava, especially when you compare it to other eruptions on Iceland in the past and eruptions in Hawaii that are also effusive like this. Data given by the University of Iceland Institute of Earth Sciences said that the average thickness of the lava field is about 14 meters, but in the thicker areas, it's about 20 to 30 meters. That's like 60 to 90 feet, I believe, <laughs> for us Americans out there. And lastly, the question that I think everyone has at this point, after about a month, is there a name? Is there an official name for the eruption? And I can't give you an answer. I so wish I could, but hopefully this will change soon because there is actually a competition going on in the nearby village of Grindavik, which is the closest village to the eruption site. And they have um, a competition of someone that gets to name the eruption. And I think so far they've had 350 submissions and they said that they've gotten some really clever and interesting names. So I'm excited to see what they pick. The competition I think officially stopped accepting submissions on April 9th. So maybe we'll be seeing an answer to this question very soon. And I will update you as soon as I know. <laughs> so that's it for this update. I mainly wanted to talk about the fissures. I wanted to keep it pretty quick this time. I hope that this helped answer a few more of your questions and once again, go check out the first video I made if you're still curious about some of the basics of the volcano. I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.